This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. People gathered at Sansu in Rapid City, South Dakota, to celebrate the opening of the Oyate Health Center. At midnight Saturday, the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board assumed primary control of management at the Indian Health Service facility. Victoria Wicks reports. A few years ago, the Cheyenne River, Oglala, and Rosebud Sioux Nations asked the Tribal Chairman's Health Board to go through the process of taking over health care at Sioux San. Cheyenne River Councilman Ryman LeBeau says the tribes reached out to the board after hearing from tribal members that they were having difficulty getting IHS to provide adequate health care and pay bills for referrals. Rosebud later dropped out of the negotiations. LeBeau says IHS has a policy of responding to crises. IHS has this life or limb policy that right now is failing us because it's so, so reactive and it, it prioritizes the very sick, whereas we, when, if we go proactive and we can do prevention health care and, and prevent a lot of these uh, sicknesses that are affecting our people and you know, costing a lot of money to treat. LeBeau says lifting the red tape that comes with IHS management will allow the Oyate Health Center to look elsewhere for additional funding and help the clinic recruit doctors at higher salaries. And it's not just for out here in Rapid City. From our IHS in Cheyenne River or Oglala, we can send, or even Rosebud, they can send their folks here and keep that money within our own systems. The Oyate Health Center will continue to provide urgent care, primary care, optometry, dental, lab, and radiology services. The facility has traditionally contracted with Rapid City Regional Health for additional care and is negotiating a new contract. For National Native News, I'm Victoria Wicks in Rapid City, South Dakota. July is the second month in a row two federal agencies failed to provide input on five bills, which address missing and murdered indigenous people, effectively stalling the bills. As Olivia Reingold reports, advocates say people's lives hang in the balance. We'll now call our hearing to order. The Department of Justice and Department of Interior were supposed to submit guidance in June on a series of bills that include Savannah's Act, which would increase coordination between tribal, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. The Senate Committee on Indian Affairs moved forward with planned meetings at that time. Here's Committee Chair Republican John Hoven of North Dakota. I'm still prepared to go forward with today's hearing as we have witnesses that have traveled far to be here. That being said, I'm prepared to give the administration a hard deadline of July 8th to provide in writing to the committee a definitive conclusion about each bill today. Neither department made that second deadline. Lucina Tanakudo Onko lobbies in Washington, D.C. on behalf of Native American interests. Um, and I do think they've had enough time to make the comments on these bills and that we cannot continue to delay on this. She says it's a disappointment that could have consequences for real people's lives. Without their comments and without their input on how we can continue to address this crisis in the best way possible, um, we're just significantly delaying, ending, and addressing this issue. She says the bills can't move forward until the Senate committee hears from the agencies, neither of which responded to requests for comment by deadline. The Associated Press reports the Justice Department provided updates to the committee, and the Interior Department submitted its guidance sometime after the extended July 8th deadline. Regardless, Onko says that there are other ways the bills can proceed, including being enveloped in VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act, which passed the House in April. I'm Olivia Reingold. And I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by BNSF Railway Company. BNSF honors the commitment of Armed Forces members and is a top employer for U.S. military veterans hiring over 9,000 veterans since 2005. More at jobs.bnsf.com. Support by AARP. What AARP does might surprise you, like supporting the Association of American Indian Physicians Conference taking place August 8th through the 10th in Chicago. More at aarp.org forward slash native origins. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.